Okay, so we're going to look at part two of the uh, lesson dealing with linear equations and rational equations. Uh, part two, though, uh, we're going to solve linear equations that contain fractions. So remember, part one, um, our linear equations did not contain fractions. So if you notice that we didn't have any fractions in here. Uh, number one, we didn't have any fractions. And number two, we did not have any fractions. Um, and number three, we do not have any fractions. But now, we're going to solve linear equations that do have fractions. So for example, let's suppose we want to solve this linear equation. Uh, we have um, x plus 3 divided by 6 equal 3 eighths plus x minus 5 divided by 4. All right, so um, one of the first things you want to do, recall, is to, when, when you have fractions, is to find the LCD. So the first step will be to find the LCD. All right, and once you find the LCD, you're going to then multiply both sides by the LCD so that we could clear the fraction. So the uh, goal um, will be to clear the fractions. All right, so that's going to be our goal. So we have, in, my de in our denominator, we have 6, 8, and 4. So I have this linear equation, and I have fractions. I have fractions involved. So, so I have numbers in the denominator other than 1. So you need to find the LCD. So what's the, what's the smallest number that 6, 8, and 4 will go into evenly? all three. So six, eight, and four. So if you can't remember how to do this, probably the best thing to do is to take the largest number that you see, which is eight, and look at multiples of eight and see if the other two will go into it evenly. You want the smallest. So the multiples of eight um, are uh, eight, sixteen, uh, 8 times 1 is 16, uh, 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, and so on. So let's look at 6 and 4. First of all, will 6 and 4 go into 8? Well, 4 goes into 8 evenly, but 6 doesn't. All right, so then we go to the next one. Um, will 6, now we, we know that 8 will go in all of these because that's how we, that, that's what multiples are. So 6, well, uh, 4 will go into 16, but eight, uh, 6 won't go into 16, so we go to the next one. Um, 8 goes into 24, 6 goes into 24 evenly, because 6 times 4 is 24, and 4 goes into um, 24 evenly, because 4 times 6 is uh, 24. So our least common denominator is 24. All right, and so so 24 is the, is the smallest number that these three numbers have in common. All right, so the LCD will be 24. All right, so again, um, best thing to do is probably to, and you have access to a calculator, so the best thing to do is, is to uh, use multiples of 8 and find the smallest multiple, the smallest, that's why it's called the least. Um, so you always use the least. If you can use a common one, a common multiple, um, but the least is always the best, more efficient one to use. So you want to find the smallest number that 6, 8, and 4 will go into. And so the smallest number is 24, because all three will go to 24 evenly. All right, so now what you're going to do, so that was your first step. So the second step is to multiply both sides by the LCD. All right, now notice um, this side, just like in a previous course you discussed this, this side has one fraction, this side has two fractions. So on this side, I'm just going to leave it as x plus 3 divided by 6. I'm just going to say times 24, just like this. Now on this side, remember, every term has to be multiplied by 24, the LCD. Every term has to be multiplied by the LCD. So this has to be multiplied by the LCD, and this has to be multiplied by the LCD. But technically what you're doing is you're saying, you're saying well, these two fractions, which I'm going to close in parentheses, has to be multiplied by 24. So notice I have more than one term on this side. Here I only had one term, so I did not need the parentheses. Here I had two terms. Um, I did need parentheses. 
So these these two, so I'm going to plan both sides. So both sides. So once in this side, once on that side, you need parentheses. Now what's going to happen, remember a while ago we said that everything had to be multiplied by 24. So 3 eighths has to be multiplied by 24. Keep that in mind. X minus 4 has to be multiplied by 24. All right, so that's the idea. Each of these has to be multiplied by 24. So mistake people make, now this is mathematically correct, but mistake people make is they do this. They'll say 8 and 8 is 1, 8 and 2, 24 is 3, and distribute the 3. Remember what we just said. If you do that, you're saying this times 3, which is incorrect, because we just said this has to be multiplied by 24. All right, so be careful. So the next thing you got to do is actually write in the step if you can't figure, if you can't think about it in your head, write in that step. So you can use a distributive property to get rid of the parentheses now. All right, so let's talk about this again. You had to first of all find the LCD. The LCD is 24. That's the smallest number that 6, 8, and 4 will go into. This left side had only one term. I did not need parentheses, but I, I do have to multiply by 24. I need to clear the fractions. I want to clear the fractions. So to do that, I'm going to multiply by 24. And it kind of makes sense because look at the 6 and 24. 6 goes in 6 one time, 6 goes in 6 four time. Remember, you want a 1 right here. You don't want a 6, you want a 1. Okay. And then um, uh, you have two terms here. So you're going to put that in parentheses and you multiply that side by 24. And then you're going to get rid of the parentheses so you can distribute the property. So, so once, once you find the LCD, you can multiply both sides by the LCD. Remember, sometimes you need you can need parentheses, sometimes you won't. Now, the rest of the steps is what you did the previous lesson. So the rest of the steps is this. That's the rest. So let's simplify each side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite. Go ahead and rewrite this. So I got 24 times x plus 3 divided by 6 equal 24 times 3 eighths plus x minus 5 divided by 4. All right, so now we're going to distribute right here. And then over here, um, I'm just going to go have this fraction times this fraction. Remember, we multiply fractions. We're multiplying fractions. Remember, this is going to be 24 over 1. So in multiplying fractions, we're going to reduce first. So 6 and 6 is 1. 6 and 2, 24 is 4. Now be careful. If, you, if you're not careful, you're going to say this is going to be 4 times x is 4x plus 3. It is not 4x plus 3. So the safe thing to do is this. When, when you do have one fraction like this and there's a binomial or more than one term in the numerator, then put that in parentheses just like this. And now you're going to distribute the 4 through here. So lots of little things you have to remember from a previous course. So 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 3 is 12. So that should be 4x plus 12, not 4x plus 3. That's why it's important you put parentheses. Okay, equal. Over here, you're going to say 24 times 3 eighths plus 24 times x minus 5 over 4. Now, you see, see this one right here? That's the same thing as this. So if you're not careful, when you, when you uh, reduce and you say 4 into 4 is 1, 4 into 24 is 6, you're going to say 6x six minus 5. And we just saw that this is not going to be 6x minus 5. So you need to put this in parentheses. Okay. Now this, notice I didn't put this in parentheses, it's just one term. Just It's just one term here. He had more than one term. All right. Now let's let's reduce. 8 to 8 is 1, 8 into 24 is 3. Remember the whole idea when I re, when I clear the when I multiply both sides by the LCDs to clear the fractions, I want these to become one. So six and six is one. Eight, eight and eight is one. Four into four is one. Four into twenty-four is six. And then you distribute the six. So then you're going to get four x plus twelve equal three times three is nine. Plus, and then distributing the 6, 6 times x is 6x, uh, and then 6 times a negative 5 is a negative 30. And so now you went from a linear equation that contained fractions to a linear equation without fractions. All these denominators are 1s. So if you put all these as fractions, all these are going to be 1s. 4x over 1, 12 over 1, 9 over 1, 6x over 1, negative 30 over 1. All right, now remember the next thing is to combine like terms. So let's combine like terms. 
On the left side, those are not like terms. Well, on the right side, I can combine the 9 and negative 30. So I get 4x plus 12 equal 6x, and 9 and a negative 30 is a negative 21. All right, now, now remember a linear equation, this is a linear equation. So remember, a linear equation definition of a linear equation um, is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus b equals 0. So at some point, at some point, I can transfer this to ax plus b uh, plus b equals zero. So remember, the linear equation looks like this: ax plus b equals zero, where a and b are real numbers, and a cannot be zero. All right. So meaning that at some point, if I want to, I can make this right here in a few steps look like this look like that. All right, so let's go ahead and bring the variables to the left, constants to the right. Um, but before we do that, let me just show you that it's going to look like this. So I'm going to subtract 6x first. Now, it didn't matter. You, 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 could, you could bring the variables to the right, constants to the left. It does not matter. It does not matter. Um, all right, now remember, though, I'm subtracting 6x because if I add 6x, it's not going to help. 6x plus 6x is 12x. I want to I wanna bring this term to the other side, so I've got to do the opposite. And so 4x and a negative 6x is a negative 2x, combine my terms, plus 12 equal 6x and a negative 6x is 0. That's what you wanted. And the 0 and negative 21 is a negative 21. So be careful with your sign. That's a negative 21. Now, if I were to add 21 to both sides, just to show you, now this is not what we do next, but, but if you want to make it look like this, so remember, a linear equation can be written in this form. So if I add 21 to both sides, if I add 21 to both sides, what I do to one side, I do to the other. I'm going to get negative 2x, 12 and a 20, positive 21 is a positive 33, equal, and then that's 0. So notice this is of this form. So a is a negative 2, b is a positive 33, and those are real numbers. Okay, so, so I can, so this right here is the linear equation, because at some point it's going to look like this. All right, but let's go ahead and, and finish this. So the process next is to is to get the term that has a variable by itself. So I'm going to get rid of this positive 12. So right now I'm adding 12. The opposite is to add 12. What you do to one side, do it once to this side and once to that side. And so 12 and a negative 12 is 0. Negative 2x plus 0 is a negative 2x. Equal, all right, a negative 21 and a negative 12 is a negative 33. And then finally... Um, to get x by itself, right now multiplying by negative 2, the opposite is divide by negative 2. And so negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1. 1 times x is x. And remember, don't leave your answer like this. you got to remember that a negative divided by negative is a positive. So you can leave it as 33 divided by 2. Or if you want to, you can write a mixed number. So you could say, remember how to change. Um, now you have access to a calculator. But remember, from a previous course to change an improper fraction to a mixed number, 2 into 33. So 2 goes into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2. Subtract, you get 1. Bring down the 3. 2 into 13 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12, with the remainder 1. So you're going to get uh, 16 and 1 half. All right. Okay, so that was number 1. Okay, number 2. Now, let's suppose you had this. Again, solve. So remember, solving an equation, you want to find the solution. So you want to you want to get x equal a number. Now you're assuming that all these steps are correct, so that's your solution. They can always go back and check, and you have access to calculator. Now, now this is going to be terminating decimal. So if you want to, you, you can plug in 16.5 and check. Um, so if you want to, for instance, if you want to check. Um, this is what you would do. Let me use this page. So if you want to check this, and I'm going to use 16.5 rather than this fraction. It's easy to use a decimal if it terminates. If it doesn't terminate, um, then you have to resort back to this fraction. But this one terminates. So x equals 16.5. So you just go back um, in the original equation. Always go back from the original. And before we go on, remember all these are equivalent 
equations. This equation is equivalent to this one. 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 Because all of these, all these equations, all these steps right here, when if I plug in 16.5, if I plug in 16.5, the left side will equal the right side. Left side equals the right side. Left side equals the right side, and so on. All right. So you get 16.5 divided by th uh, uh, five plus three divided by 6, and you want to see if that's going to equal 3 eighths plus 16.5 subtract 5 divided by 4. So 16.5 plus 3 is 19.5 divided by 6. And again, you want to see if that's going to equal 3 eighths plus, and then 16.5 subtract 5 is 11.5 divided by 4. Now for the rest, just use your calculator. So if you use your calculator, let's see, 19.5 divided by 6 19.5 divided by 6. Now you could get something like 3.25. Alright, let's see what happens here. So this is going to be 3 eighths. Um, and then plus now 11.5 divided by 4. That's going to be 20, uh, 2.875. Now let's see what 3 eighths plus this is. So 3 divided by 8 plus, so 3 divided by 8 is this, and if I add 2.875, I get 3.25. So this side equals the right side, so this is correct, so that's my solution. All right, now again, you're not going to always have the time on a test to check this. Uh, notice how many steps this is, and it, it, if you do, it's always a good idea to check because notice how many steps there are, and you could easily have messed up. Um, so it's, it's important that you try not to mess up throughout the process. You need to be very accurate with this. All right, number two. All right, you want to solve this equation. We have x divided by 4 equal 2 plus x minus 3 divided by 3. All right, now... Um, again, if you remember the previous one, this is one fraction, and on the right side you have two fractions because this is really 2 divided by 1. So this is really 2 over 1 plus x minus 3 divided by 3. All right, so if you look at all these fractions, 4, 1, and 3, uh, the denominators of these fractions, 4, 1, and 3. Now, it's probably easier here for you to see that the LCD would have to be 12 because if you look at multiples of 4, look at multiples of 4, um, you get 4, three, and, and 3 does not go into 4 evenly. The next one is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. 3 does not go into 8 evenly. The next one is 12, and 3 goes into 12 evenly. So the LCD is 12. All right, so remember the next step is to now multiply both sides by 12. So notice this is one fraction, so I'm not going to use parentheses. I'm just say uh, 12 times x over 4. Now this is really 12 over 1. If you want to, you can write as 12 over 1. Um, now, see how this is just one term, so I'm not going to put parentheses here. I'm just going to leave the parentheses off. Equal. Now, you see how this is two terms? So, if you remember the previous one, if I had two terms, remember, I always go back, I put parentheses there, because all of these have to be multiplied by the LCD. So, both of these terms, I have to multiply by the LCD. So, I'm put times 12. So this side by 12 and this side by 12, although I need to uh, um, put this side in parentheses and then times 12. Now once, now remember the next step. The next step is now to use um, the rest of these. So we're going to simplify each algebraic expression. So over here, if I simplify this, 4 goes into 4. Um, let me go ahead and rewrite it. Now you don't have to rewrite this, um, but let me go ahead and rewrite it so I can, I can use it for explanations. All right, so you're going to reduce this. 4 into 4 is 1. That's what you wanted. Remember, you're going to clear the fractions. Um, so you're reducing the 12 and the 1, at uh, 12 and the 4. So so remember, if you need to write this, is 12 and 1. So 4 into 4 is 1. 4 into uh, 12 is 3. And so this becomes 3 times x is 3x. 3 over 1 is 3. x over 1 is x. So 3 times x is 3x. Equal. Now over here, you're going to distribute. Now what I would do is, is write in that step. You, you're saying 12 times 2 plus. 
you're saying 12 times this fraction. X minus 3 divided by 3. Now remember, that's where you can put the parentheses there. Because you have more than one term. All right, now let's, let's simplify as much as we can right now. So that's 3X equal, that's going to be 24 plus, now over here, I'm going to reduce. I want to clear this fraction. Remember, you want 1's there. 3 into 3 is uh, 1. 3 into 12 is 4. And then you're going to distribute the 4. So notice, notice each little part. It's important that you that you mimic what I'm doing. So 4 times x is 4x. And then 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. All right. So now I went from a um, linear equation that had fractions to a linear equation that uh, does not have fractions. All right, so I'm going to combine like terms. And the next part of step one here was to um, combine like terms. So the right side, the left side, I can't combine anything. The right side, I can combine the 24 and the negative 12. So I'm going to get 20, uh, oops, I'm going to get 12. 24 and negative 12 is 12 plus 4x. All right, so the next step is to bring constants to one side. Right here, step two. Um, bring all the verbs to one side, constants to the other. So let's go ahead and subtract 4x from both sides. Um, if I add 4x, that's going to help. That's not going to help because 4x plus 4x is 12x. Uh, I'm sorry, 8x. So you want to subtract 4x. So you can subtract 4x from both sides. What you do to one side, you do to the other. All right, 3x subtract 4x is a negative x or a negative 1x. And that's going to equal, now when I combine like terms here, that's 0. 12 plus 0 is 12. All right, now remember, you want to get x by itself. This is a negative 1x. That's a negative 1x. If you need to rewrite it, you don't have to. If you need to rewrite it as negative 1 times x, you need to do that. So to get x by itself, I'm going to, to get 1x by itself, not negative x, but positive 1x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, because a negative 1 divided by negative 1 is a positive 1. But what I do to one side, I do to the other. And so negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. 1 times x is x. And then 12 divided by negative 1 is a negative 12. And so that will be your solution. Again, if you want to check, you can. Let me check this. Check uh, x equal negative 12. So you go back to the original, because you could have easily messed up anywhere around here. Um, so our original number was x over 4, so we're saying x is negative 12. So we're going to get, we're going to get uh, negative 12 divided by 4 equal 2 plus x is negative 12, so 2 plus, and then this fraction is negative 12, subtract 3 over um, 3. All right, so negative 12 divided by 4, that's going to be a negative 3. And I want to see if that's going to equal... I want to see those side, both sides are equal. So 2 plus, now this fraction in the numerator, negative 12 and a negative 3, is a negative 15, and that's being divided by 3. So this side's a negative 3. Okay, over here, I'm going to get 2 plus a negative 15 divided by 3 is a negative 5, and when I add these two terms up, 2 and a negative 5 is a negative 3. So those are equal. So uh, this does check. So that's your answer. That's your solution. That's your root. Remember, solution, root, you mean the same thing. All right, let's do one more. All right, number three. You have x plus 1 divided by 3 equal 5 minus x plus 2 divided by 7. Okay, so again, if you need to rewrite the 5 as 5 over 1, go ahead and do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. All right, and so if you look at the denominators, 3, 1, and 7, the LCD is going to be 21. That's your LCD. So remember, now you're going to multiply both sides by the LCD. Now, this side only had one fraction. This side had 2. So um, I'm going to say 21 times x plus 1 divided by 3. Now, remember, the, think, think of what you, what's going to happen. At some point, you're going to reduce this. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 7 is 21. I'm sorry, 3 into 21 is 7. So remember, though, be, be careful, you're not saying 7 times x, you're saying 7 times x plus 1. So it's very important that you put that in parentheses since that's more than one term. 
equal, okay, I'm going to put this sign in parentheses since that's two terms here. Um, so I get something like this. All right, now I'm going to distribute. So now I'm doing, I'm going back to this part here. I'm doing this right here. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and rewrite this. 21 times x plus 1 divided by 3 equal 21 times these two fractions. Okay, so now let's reduce. 3 into 3 is 1. Remember the whole idea of multiplying by the LCD is to clear those fractions. So this 3 and the 7, I want them, when I reduce them, I need that to be a 1. So 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 27, uh, 21 is um, uh, 7. So then we distribute the 7 here. So, so everything in here is going to be multiplied by 7. And over here, I'm going to distribute the 21. So uh, if I go ahead do, and do this now, 7 times x is 7x, plus, and then 7 times positive 1 is a positive 7. Equal. Over here, I'm going to get 21 times 5, 21 times 5, minus, and then 21 minus, and then 21 times, and remember, that's more than one term, so put that in parentheses, x plus 2 divided by 7. So put that in parentheses, just like you put this in parentheses right here. And from here to here in parentheses. Alright, so then I get 7x plus 7 equal 21 times 5. Um, it's going to be um, 110, or 1, oops, sorry, sorry, uh, 105. Minus. Alright, now over here, over here, um, we're going to reduce. So 7 to 7 is 1, 7 to 21 is 3, and then you can distribute the 3, just like we did this. So be a little bit careful. Um, so think of this, remember we talked about this in a previous lesson, think of this as a negative 3, so you're distributing a negative 3. So negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. So be careful. Um, maybe, um, okay, so, so let me go ahead and discuss this. See this right here? When I said bring on a negative, and then you reduce, okay, but when you, re when you distribute, when you distribute, you remember it's subtracting 3, this is subtracting, subtracting 3 times x plus 2 over 7 is the same thing as adding the opposite. So this becomes plus a negative 3 times x plus 2 over 7. So you distribute the negative 3. All right, so always be careful about that. So you need to distribute the negative 3. So negative 3, right here, negative 3, times x is negative 3x, negative 3 times a positive 2 is a negative 6. Okay, so that's what we get. All right, now, combine like terms, I'm going to get 7x plus 7. Over here, 105 subtract 6 is 99, minus 3x. Okay, let's bring the variables one side, constant to the other. So add 3x to both sides. Right now I'm subtracting 3x, so the opposite is to add 3x. 7x plus 3x is 10x, so I get 10x plus 7 equal. When I combine like terms over here, 3x and a negative 3x is 0. 99 and 0 is still 99. The next step, subtract 7. Combine like terms, I get 10x equal... Um, 99 minus 7 is a 92. And then divide both sides by 10 in order to get x by itself. Right now, multiplying both sides, I'm multiplying x by 10. So the opposite is to um, divide both sides by 10. So I get 10x equal 92. So divide by 10. Divide by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 1 times x is x. Now, reduce this, 92 divided by 10, they're both divisible by 2, so 92 divided by 2, 92 divided by 2, if you can't figure it out in your head, then, then, then use your calculator. 92 divided by 2 is 46, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and so there's your answer. All right, now if you're going to check this, again, check this, first of all, see what kind of decimal this is. Use a decimal, so 46 divided by 5. 46 divided by 5 is 9.2. So you, when, when you check this, go back to the original, you, you plug in 9.2, you substitute 9.2 into x, and then make sure check each side. All right.
but Levian says 46 divided by 5, or if you want to write it as a mixed number. So my math lab, they'll probably ask you to leave it as a fraction. Um, but change that to a mixed number. I'm going to say 5 into 46. So 5 into uh, 46, um, um, 9 times. 9 times 5 is 45, with the remainder 1. So you get 9 and 1 fifth. You can always check it. 9 times 5 is 45. 45 plus 1 is 46. You get 46 over 5. Okay, so um, in this lesson, remember what we did was we um, we solved linear equations containing fractions. So compare part 2 with part 1 and make sure, make sure you're careful with each step. Remember what we did. We had to find the LCD. Then the idea was to clear the fractions. And then sometimes, it, well, actually in all of these, I had to use parentheses to begin with. Then I did distributive property. Um, and I had to be very careful uh, with these because sometimes we had to enclose the numerator parentheses. So go back and look at all these steps. All right, so that's going to conclude part two.